I want to hit financials too, Brian, with you because yeah. I feel like, remember the financials, financials, has been a, it's been a favored place for you. I think the most substantial thing that came out of the two days of Powell, since we really didn't, we didn't get much, if anything, new on the monetary policy front, was he all but slammed the door shut on these new Basel III regulations that have been railed on by bank CEOs and long discussed. Powell made it clear that there are going to be major changes to what is being proposed, and that is going to be good for the banks. There's, there's no real way to, uh, other way to look at that. Over the past month, the XLF, 52-week high now. Wells is, is at a 52-week high. J.P. Morgan's at a high. You're trimming that one, though. Yep. We trim a little J.P. Morgan because we uh, prefer Citigroup, as we've been adding to Citigroup over the last five months. It's a contrarian play. We love to buy banks when they're restructuring and cutting costs. <clears throat> but we've been long-term bulls in terms of the big banks, the asset managers, and the brokerage firms because of the scalable size of this. Now, with respect to the regulations falling off, now you have the opportunity for some regional banks to add scale. How do they add scale? Through M&A and business combinations. So I think you're going to see consolidation be a major theme maybe as early as the second half of this year, but certainly into 25 and 26. And that's going to be really, really good um, for the financial services area any, overall, which, oh, by the way, still remains uh, relatively underweight by the majority of our institutional investors. I mean, J.P. Morgan is a, is a place, as Josh knows, that has had just tremendous momentum behind it. There's nothing to suggest, at least on the surface, that that paradigm is about to change anytime soon, correct? Yeah, I don't think so. It's it's a very uh, it's a it's a standalone issue, even within financial services. There is no other institution that has all of the elements that J.P. Morgan has. They're number one or two in every business that they're in. They're more profitable than most of their peers. They don't make stupid decisions when the market gets shaky, and then when the market normalizes, they tend to out earn everyone else. It's one of these things where you actually don't get penalized for paying a slightly above industry multiple for the stock. It's a higher price book. It's been proven year after year why it's a higher price book, and that has never worked against you. Look at the performance of JPM versus the XLF versus the money center banks versus basket case stocks like Citi. Consistently, it works, it works, Former. it works. Former basket case stocks like City right, because the cool. stock is no former basket call, case. Call me when uh, commercial real estate the, the, blows the, up a little the, bit more. The stocks hit a new 52-week high. Jimmy, you've been talking about what Jane Frazier's been doing over there at City, sort of reinventing. It's what, in a 17-year drawdown. With all due respect to City. All right, but that's listen. Okay, now listen, it's time. You, in some respects, accurate, people try and play a "What have you done for me lately?" game when it comes to these banks. I mean, it's an accurate description of, of the history, and I'm not taking shots at you. I mean, I think you clearly have to understand that the sentiment has changed. I agree with Brian on this. Uh, the, the street is finally giving Jane Frazier credit for what she's doing. Cost-cutting, she big deal. No, 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 no. Uh, you're, you're being too dismissive of this. I mean, okay. for two years, she's been right-sizing the business internationally, getting rid of underperforming divisions, whether it's geographical or underperforming divisions like municipal bonds, obviously near and dear to my heart. But she looked at that with a clear, cold eye and said, this isn't giving us enough, enough return on equity. We're done with it. The street applauds that. And frankly, the value is there. I'm not, I'm, Josh, I don't want to argue with you about this. What's happening right now, not history, the history is done. What's happening right now is the stock is generating cash flow with which it's meaningfully retiring shares. We can have a debate, by the way, that doesn't mean we're having an argument. If you have fundamentally oh, different new. and opposing <laughs> views, well, just because. What do they do after they right size? Is there a growth story here? Well, there, so good question. Yes, there is. And there's also risk, all right? Where is the growth story here? Frankly, it's credit cards, which if you believe that the economy is going to go strong, then it's a fine place to be. If you're bearish on the economy and you're worried about delinquency, some may be, they say, I don't want to own Citi. Oh, by the way, they also do a mean business in Treasury security for corporations I don't, I and security but processing. I don't think it's one of these. I want the message to be clear. This isn't an either or. You can own both. And I think people have, have completely said no to Citigroup. For the record, we own more J.P. Morgan in our portfolios than we do Citigroup. We're very pointed in terms of where we own Citigroup, but I think it's time to start looking at that company There's one again. important point here, all right? If Basel III is going to be modified and capital requirements... Not if, when, because it is. I'm with you, all right? I love what I'm hearing from Jay Powell today. That's going to give Citi more wherewithal to buy back shares. Over the last five years, they've retired 20% of their shares outstanding. At, at discounts, really meaningful discounts to tangible book value, that's good.